Hey, what's up? It's David Duford here at Final Expense Agent Mentor, home of the best final expense sales training you've ever seen. In today's video, I'm specifically going to be talking about two interrelated topics regarding replacement, how to get more replacement business, as well as how to re prevent your business from being replaced. So we're going to kind of play both sides of the coin here and hopefully reinforce some basic fundamentals of selling final expense uh, that will make you more profitable, sell more cases, and keep them too. Now, as a primer, before we start, of course, I have to sell you on my books. Buy my book, buy my book. It's called The Official Guide to Selling Final Expense Insurance. Great primer for new final expense agents or those thinking about the business. It's got everything you need from scripts, sales presentation tactics, um, lead generation tips. Uh, it's a great sales and, and marketing system. Also, this book too, uh, Interviews with Top Producing Insurance Agents. Please buy it if you haven't already. Uh, this month up to September 15th, uh, all profits after costs are being donated to the Wounded Warrior Project, uh, really for both books, by the way. So um, I'm looking to uh, hopefully cut a nice uh, big check to the Wounded Warrior Project. So please buy the uh, insurance, the interviews book, uh, 13 different interviews from different agents in different segments of the insurance business. Great way to learn how successful producers are successful. Now back to today's topic, replacements. Let's start first with a fundamental rule of replacement. Uh, it's essentially the Hippocratic Oath. You shall do no harm to your prospects, okay? So with no matter what advice I give here, this rule applies, and I think it's important to mention this up front. Replacement should only be done if there's a measurable benefit to the prospect. Um, replacements can be potentially damaging. You can take somebody out of contestability, even by saving them five or 10 bucks, but potentially put them in a new product saving five or 10 bucks, but then put them into contestability. Not saying that this is always a bad thing to do, but it may be a bad thing to do, especially if their health isn't the best, and especially if they don't know the risks that they're taking. So I say all this because uh, it's important to de designate and differentiate where a replacements are appropriate and how to set them up successfully from the beginning. So with that said, let's talk about how to replace your competition and how to do it in an effective way. And it, we're not just going to talk about hey, you should replace, we're going to give you some sales tactics that you can employ right away and to start getting results. So the first thing, replacing others um, is really important tactic to learn. And here's why. Replacements, um, I have talked to lots of different insurance agents over the years. A lot of the top producers tell me that more than a quarter to a third of their business results because of replacements. These are guys writing 200,000 plus a year. I've cl had agents claim they're writing more than 50% of their business as replacements. That's crazy. But I believe it. There's a lot of inferior products out there on the markets that are either way priced high or they have poor underwriting. And so what ultimately happens is, is that there is a great opportunity to help these people out with better pricing or getting more coverage for the same price while potentially simultaneously getting them qualified for first day full coverage, whereas they otherwise couldn't qualify for because of their health with their, their, their incumbent product or because the product such as those on TV don't offer first day full coverage. So there's a really good opportunity. You shouldn't pass up replacement wholesale uh, as some sort of fundamental rule. You should look at it on a case by case basis, but help out where it's a measurable benefit to the client. So how do you do that? How do you identify replacement opportunities? Well, so first of all, the way I teach insurance sales, or at least final expense insurance sales, is to identify why people sent the card back. Seemingly, you're seeing somebody who requested information, maybe saw you at a seminar, sent a direct mail or Facebook lead back. Ask them what their thoughts and concerns were. Um, you'll identify through that process, um, you know, what they're doing, why they sent it in. Also ask, hey, you know, what are you doing right now currently for your life insurance? This presumptive stick question will give you information on if they have coverage or not. And if they do, who's it with? How's it work? And give you the opportunity to ultimately, and this is where the replacement sales really come in handy, uh, on doing a policy review. You always want to do a policy review because A, it demonstrates your expertise as a life insurance agent. When you can show a client exactly where in the book the rates are, how the product works, and explain some of the fine print, you don't have to say, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. It's assumed when you can show them all this stuff that you know your stuff, okay? And the reason we do a policy review as well is because nothing sells better than what the actual incumbent product says it will do or won't do. So for example, let's say there's somebody that 
has a colonial pen plan. They bought it six months ago. They otherwise would qualify for first day full coverage. I'm going to review their policy with them. And I'm going to say, you see where it says right there, Mr. Jones, uh, 10% or 7% return of premium in the first year. That means when you die, the death benefits return on your premium plus 7%. That means you're not getting paid the full $10,000. Does that make sense? What do you think about that? And, and that alone sells way better than just saying, you know, Colonial Pen, bunch of crap. They're just these two-year waiting period policies and just claiming that that's the case. Claims unsubstantiated are nothing. You need a preponderance of proof. You need to show and tell, not just tell. So by showing it to them, hmm, makes a lot of people uh, converts to your cause. So once you've identified and demonstrated your expertise, how do you actually present the opportunity to sell them something based on a replacement? So there's two ways you can do it. Actually, three ways. Um, you can get them a better price for the same coverage. You can get them a little bit more coverage for the same price, or you can sell them more coverage on top of what they're paying for a higher price. So you can mag you can get them more coverage than what they're paying plus paying more. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't make too much sense to me, but here's how I'll explain it to you. My point is, as you may be thinking, well, what does the client want? Do they want to save money? Do they want more coverage? You can flat out ask them, or when you get down to actually presenting price, you can show all the options to them and just let them choose what they want. Because what we do at by the end of the sales presentation, the way I teach final expense, we know if they're interested. We know that they have some interest in, in what we have to offer. We know that they're pissed, pissed that they're being charged too much, or they don't have adequate coverage, and they weren't made aware of these options. So they're on our side to help them. At this point, we just want to make them a client. We just want to give them the opportunities to make it as easy as possible to become a client. So what I will show here, I'll tell you a quick story. I had an agent, one of the first agents I was training back in, man, 2012? Yeah, 2012, I think. Dang, 2013. That's a long time ago. Uh, I was down in Columbus, Georgia, and we door knocked this lady. And she had some plan from a telesales company. It was really overpriced. And... Uh, I think it was a two-year wait. And so what we ultimately did is at the close of the presentation, the good option was the same amount of coverage she had for like 20 bucks less a month, but with first day full coverage. The second option was the same price with first day full coverage, but for a couple thousand more than what she was getting. So she could get, she could spend the same dollar amount, but get the same amount. Does that make sense? Get, or spend the same dollar amount, but get more coverage, a couple thousand more. Then the third option was $20, $10, $20 more, and then five or $6,000 more plus first day full coverage. So she could do, you know, the entry level, the save money plan to get the exact same thing, but more coverage or the Cadillac plan. And by offering this, there leaves no question as to what the client wants. You're not forcing them just to save money when they may feel, well, maybe I need a little bit more coverage um, or vice versa. You don't have really a dog in the race. You just let them buy what they want and you make money either way. It's crazy how it works, but it works nonetheless. So uh, that's what I advocate uh, when presenting the option because that way you you know you're going to get something. So, oh, okay, last point here. Very, very important, ladies and gentlemen. This is probably more important than the three choice close strategy I just explained. What you want to do, excuse me, what you want to do in this last section here please tie, tie up loose ends before you leave. Okay. So a lot of replacement sales are lost because the incumbent company uh, scares people into keeping what they have and guilt trips them. You have to prevent that from happening. So the first order of business, first of all, generally when you replace, always use a carrier that does a phone interview so you can get an instant decision. Okay. So that way you can confidently cancel the existing policy out before you leave, and that's the big lesson here, only if you know that they're approved. Call the existing company, uh, get it off a of bank draft, or just outright cancel it. That way you kick out the incumbent policy as quickly as possible. Doesn't mean they won't stop in or call back later. But on the other hand, what you need to do is you need to coach your client on what to expect. Uh, there's a local agent around me, uh, works for a captive company. He's been in the business forever. I remember him replacing my... Uh, fraternal company once and he said i said <laughs> this was first year business I, I wrote the guy up a good plan it was a good sale and he, he replaced it and i walked down and i talked to the agent i talked to the client i said 
why did you buy from this guy? He says, well, your company's from Canada. It's a foreign company, you know? It's like, it's like, like he was saying it like it was from, I don't know, Saudi Arabia, Iraq or something. Like some place you need to be concerned. It's Canada. It's like America Junior. And then he said, your company's not a real insurance company. It only gives out, it's a it's certificate, it's not a policy. And on that simple advice alone, he replaced it. And I was like, well, okay. But my point is, is now I've run into this guy years and years, and he, he did the same deal on uh, another one. We wrote a company out of Utah, and this guy said, this company's not local here. So we replaced this company Saved the client like got her like three or four thousand more in coverage, and he came by and said, "This is this isn't a local company. Look, these guys are down the road in Georgia. These people are in Utah, like it was from Iraq. You know, I mean, Utah's Utah, but it, they're still America, right? You know. It's just, but these there's agents that will do whatever possible. So what I train agents on, or what I train my clients on now, is let's say if I replace this guy's policies, which I've done time and time again, I say, look, Mr. Jones, here's the deal." I know this guy. I know how these agents work. And you don't have to know the agent. You can just say this script. I want, I want to warn you about what to expect. These agents will call you back. And they will try to talk you out of your good decision. They will say to you, you've made a bad decision. What are you doing? You're crazy. You're, you wasted my time. You're, you know, they'll try to guilt trip you into keeping this plan you've already had. But I want to make sure you're 100% on board with this. And that you understand the reason you're taking this out is because you're getting a better deal. It's not personal. It's business. And that you will not be talked out of this. And I, I've learned through trial and error to have a heart-to-heart, -heart, a come-to-Jesus meeting with these clients because you cannot babysit these people when you go, okay? You're not going to be going back a million times. you got to get them totally built, totally sold right there in that sales call. And you got to get their commitment. And I mean hardcore to the point of getting the commitment. So I'll go through all that stuff because if you don't do it, buyer's remorse sets in. Okay, did I do the right thing when I made this replacement sale? And then if so happen, the agent tends to call back, they'll be talked right back into it. Okay, again, people generally don't like to do anything different than what they're normally accustomed to. So you have to be careful to prevent them from making a decision to go back to <coughs> the, the, the ordinary, the normal. And by, by removing the incumbent, getting it canceled, giving them the talk about what to expect about getting badgered or pestered and that they promise not to change their minds. It re resolves a lot of this risk of potentially getting, getting axed on, on the replacement deal. So there you have how to replace. Let's talk and in, in transition to preventing replacements. So the good news about preventing replacements is if you listen to my material, if you do what I tell you to do when it comes to selling final expense, you'll find that replacements aren't nearly as a problem. If you sell captively, if you sell overpriced companies, if you take no thought to the quality of the product you're selling your clients, then you will run the risk of getting everything that's coming towards you. Um, don't be surprised when a moderately decent brokering agent comes in and replaces your overpriced plan and you lose out on a huge chargeback deal. You're at huge risk. You can prevent 80% of the chargeback problems by choosing not just to represent one company, but choosing to represent a multitude of carriers. It doesn't have to be 20 of them, it can be three to five. And with competitive pricing and flexible underwriting, these are the two things that prevent most replacements. I found a lot of people send back cards because they find out that their, their life insurance is just, they felt talked into it, it was too expensive for what they were getting. They felt like the, the coverage they had just wasn't adequate. And, and on some sense, too, I think some people send cards back to see if there's a better deal because they just didn't have a positive experience with the, real, the, the, with the agent. I've, I've noticed this. This is all anecdotal, but make sure no matter what you're selling, you feel a good connection to the client. Now, there's some people that are gutless and, and, and show no mercy and they'll replace you over five or ten bucks. There's always going to be those people. But I find that a lot of people who I end up replacing – the client comes out and admits, I just didn't like the guy. Yeah, there's something wrong with that guy. I, know, I just didn't trust the guy. There's something iffy about it. You know, they bought under resistance, but weren't fully bought in. And a lot of that, I think, comes back to maybe they didn't trust the agent. But also, this deal that they got, they just weren't impressed with what they got. And there was a, there was a lot of objecting and rebuttaling and, and kind of 
cajoling the person into taking the deal. So I think that's an element as well. So look, if I come, so I'll give you another example. So I, I have a carrier called Trinity Life Insurance, very good company. Um, recommend every agent selling final expense to pick them up. I can help you with that, by the way, if you're interested. Anyways, I was running a deal down in Alabama, a real nice guy. Um, he wanted to buy more insurance, see if he could get a better deal. Well, I found out he had a Trinity plan and this guy wanted a better deal. He would have, he would have replaced over 10, 15 bucks, but there was no way I was going to be replacing his plan because Trinity is super competitive. I looked at standard life. I looked at other carriers that are competitive. I couldn't save the money. And so I walked away, which if he had bought, say, even if he bought like a Lincoln heritage plan and you know, and I would have saved him 10, 20, but I would have made a thousand plus dollar commission off of that sale. And so that's what I mean is sometimes people have no loyalty. They'll keep insurance and they know it's important, but they'll flip on a dime, literally, um, not figuratively, really, literally. And, and so to prevent that, this inherent nature of this market, you've got to be willing to write comp competition. I, again, I'm a value guy. I don't want to be the cheap, low price leader. But in the final expense market, that's just the way it is. These perceived benefits that people think they're getting out of some of these plans that layer in like funeral advantage protection or, or locking in prices on aspects of the funeral. These people don't care about that stuff unless it's really well explained and reinforced. 80% of the time, six months later, when the, you know, era, the, the heating bill is through the roof, they can save 20, 25 bucks and an agent can logically explain and justify why saving that money is still going to help them out in the long run. They'll switch. It's, it's, you're leaving yourself at a big risk. And that's another thing too. Preventing replacements as well as replacing really means you have to understand our clientele. Final expense is a weird market. A lot of people don't get it, but you've got to understand what makes these people tick. It's not the, the traditional value-driven approach. Of course, value is important. You've got to sell them whole life insurance. Don't get me wrong. But like, it's not about the sizzle. It's about grandma only has $1,000 a month that she keeps. And if you can show her how she can get another 20 bucks back a, a month or 250 a year, that's a lot of money to somebody who only makes 1000 a month. You cannot downplay that. That's why, again, I'm a broker. That's why I operate the way I do and recruit and train agents to do that because you got to have access to different companies. And four, um, always call on replacement um, attempts. So yeah, so if you ever get a notice where somebody lapses or somebody's trying to replace, always call the, call the, call the client back. See, just ask them, hey, what's going on? I saw you went to replace the plan. What am I doing? What, what's going on? What can I do to help? You'll find nine out of 10 times you can save these deals, you know, um, because it lapsed. Sometimes it'll come through as a lapse because the client um, was asked to stop the bank draft, but they did not complete a replacement form because in some circumstances, if you complete it, which you should always re do a replacement form. If you do a replacement form and you send that in, it notifies the existing company that somebody's come in to try to replace you. And you sometimes can get a copy of the replacement form and then you, the, then the incumbent agent knows what's going on. So, but a lot of agents don't even bother to fill out the replacement form. And so what then ends up happening is, is that, you know, you just see a lapse report or a missed payment and uh, you don't know it's a replacement, but a lot of lapses are replacements. You just don't know. So call them up and see what's going on. Um, if you can visit them and it's especially powerful if you followed my advice earlier and you got them totally bought in where you, you totally close them. Is there anything I could help you with? You know, this is the best thing you, I can get you. You're 100% sure you're going to keep this. If you get the total commitment, you can use that back on them. And you can do it so in a way because they promised they would do all this on the front end. So I always call these people back. And a lot of the times, some replacement deals are really bad. Um, there, are, I remember hearing about one agent in Indiana who now has been defrocted for insurance agent, insurance, insurance license. This woman would go around and replace first day full coverage with Gerber and wouldn't do a replacement for him because Gerber would, doesn't allow those kind of replacements. But she would go in and, repl and, and price replace on that stuff. It was stupid. And so Gerber's a two-year waiting period policy, guys. It's like as if we went around and sold AIG or Colonial Pen and replaced first day full coverage options. And, and she lied about it. And it's just there are agents that do a lot of bad things. And they cut corners. You know, oh, you smoke some of the time. We'll, we'll just put you down as a non-smoker. Nobody has to know in order to get the replacement or do that in general. So always be the guy who travels the higher road call them up see what they did don't get mad at the client you know you don't know what information they were given 
you know, see if you can help them out. Always take the high road helping out that your their interest is what you're most interested in, their their welfare. And and explain to them why keeping it is a good deal if it is. Hey, you may have gotten beat and that's fine. Uh, you know, chalk it up to learning a lesson. That that's some, something that happens to all of us. I do hope that you enjoyed this book or this book. It's kind of turned out that way, right? And I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video about replacing and saving and fighting against replacements. Uh, this is valuable training for the final expense agent getting started. For, for those of you who are captive or thinking about going captive or going independent, and and this really reinforces how I train agents to work in this business. I recruit agents, train them to be successful in final expense under a brokerage capacity, largely because of the inherent nature of the final expense market. They don't make a lot of money, and every dollar counts. And uh, seeming that most of these comp carriers all sell whole life insurance, it's a simplified issue, uh, it really comes down to quality coverage and pricing in order to ascertain the best level of persistency. And don't be on the wrong side of that. It's very easy to prevent with a few of the simple steps I've described. Um, don't be foolish and pretend it doesn't apply to you. Name here is Dave Duford. I hope you enjoyed this channel. Please like this video if you thought it was valuable and you got something out of it and subscribe as well. Leave a comment below if you'd like to ask some questions, follow up, maybe have me explain something a little bit more in depth. Either way, I appreciate my audience. I thank you for watching today's video and we'll see you next time. Bye.